I'm a first generation bison farmer. There was a fence right here. We're also getting rid of some bison. It is ready for fence building. We really wanted to open this thing up. Good morning, Jackie. Oh my, it's just Jackie. Charlie, chickens. Calves are jazzed up this morning. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Customers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. The cold, little chilly morning. Got some exciting stuff going on around the ranch. I also want to thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. I'll tell you a little bit about that here in just a little bit. I'm gonna have some fun on the skid steer today. Gonna talk to you about these guys today. I know I've been bringing some bison over to the Ponderosa. We're also getting rid of some bison. I'm gonna tell you about that. Hope you guys are excited for another bison video. Skid steers fueled up. It's hay 30 somewhere, right? These bison need some hay. Let's get them some hay. Hey guys, I want to tell you about my sponsor today, Athletic Greens. You know, as you get older, you got to start worrying and focusing more on your health. And um, at the age, those things are sort of important to me. See, I have a morning routine. Ever since I was introduced to Athletic Greens, my routine has changed. See, I'm a coffee drinker. I love my coffee in the mornings and I gotta have it. But now I start with AG1. I am honestly impressed of how the AG1 has made me feel. I was a little hesitant to try it for the first time, but now I love it. I've been drinking it for a couple weeks now and I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I tried some pineapple juice. Honestly, I love it. It's just became a natural habit now that I'm doing it every day. 8 to 10 ounces of water, mix it with pineapple juice, whatever you want, one scoop of AG1, and I drink this before my coffee. Sometimes, I'm running late. Didn't have time to mix up your AG1? That's okay. Take the AG1 packet, 12 gram serving, on the go. All you need is some water. This nutrient drink is a simple way to really focus on your body. AG1 is the healthiest thing you can do in under one minute. One scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. That's it. Click my link to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health. Gonna double fork it this morning since the big Joe heard. Need some open these gates. Morning.
it's a uh, it's nice to double fork it because I can bring both of them in this pasture instead of going back through the gate and getting the other bale of hay for Big Joe and them. It's nice to do that, but uh, I've made it hard on myself <laughs> by, by uh, setting these on the slope of a hill and me knowing that I have to push the bale of hay to get the wrap off um, instead of crawling back in my skid steer to do it. I have to push the bale of hay, get the wrap off, then hop back in the skid steer and roll it out and then in the meantime i'll take this one over to big joe and them over there so come on dusty you gotta think a little bit but uh you know just uh just getting a little workout in on the on the chicken legs getting a little workout in you know trying to drive through and really use my hips and uh really get underneath this bella hata to really push it um back uphill so No sense to roll it out, they got it. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm heading over to my uncle's. I'm over here on the back side of the property. I'm gonna stop a second. I just got the, um, the grapple hooked up and then I've got the tree puller also picked up with the grapple because I'm gonna take them both to the same location. So I don't have to run over there, come back and get the tree puller. So I've scooped it up with the grapple and I wanna show you guys something. I'm very, very excited about to crawl out of this. Uh, Richard, who I always talk about, has uh, been over here with that bad boy there and his skid steer he's done a lot of work for me uh recently and and one of the reasons i've been uh i had him use his bulldozers because there were some big trees in this fence line guys i showed you a video a couple weeks ago of me in the skid steer with the tree puller and the grapple 
you know i got a lot of work done a lot of small stuff that he couldn't really get but um man this place looks so different and there was a fence right here there was a fence right here but uh there were some big trees here along this fence line this place here you know after coming back here and looking at this, this is the whole point of it we really wanted to open this thing up see guys cross timbers basically which is all which is my name which is my brand name and the ranch and all that but what is cross timbers well cross timbers is a eco region of oklahoma and it basically it goes all the way down to uh, texas and this eco region the region where the western plains of oklahoma meet the eastern woodlands and so sulfur which is where we're located is kind of right there in the middle of that you can kind of i-35 is sort of that is sort of that corridor um, that splits oklahoma essentially well just on i-35 and and just east of i-35 is this cross timbers eco region uh, that's where i kind of i got the name of uh, my brand and stuff uh, for this region of oklahoma but yes we love our woods and uh, i love my trees but uh you know there's places the, where you need open spaces and a, a lot of these areas in Oklahoma as you can see this hay prairie a lot of this pasture uh, the reason it's not open on some of it is because trees invasive trees have taken over and, and the number one is cedar you know my opinion on cedar trees uh, the eastern red cedar and what it can do uh, another one is hackberry and another one is elm uh, those can easily take over on your fence lines and things like that that I've probably already talked about. We really wanted to open this up. And so you can get rid of those invasive sort of trees um, and, and clean up your land like it's supposed to be. But if you don't manage your land, you don't graze them, you don't put bison on them, uh, to manage the land, uh, you get the overgrowth of trees. And that's what's happened, um, not only on my place, but a lot of places um, all over the country and in Oklahoma. That happens a lot. Trees like the eastern red cedar will take over your entire property. That's why uh, we've got tools like the tree puller and grapple is because we're gonna spend a lot of time doing this. I still have so much more work to do on this property to open it up for bison because bison belong in the open plains. And uh, you know, these bison roamed through here hundreds of years ago and there may not have been very many trees here at all. But because of human intervention and the lack of grazing and fencing and things like that you have the overgrowth of trees and invasive trees taking over so you have those situations when you want to build a new fence you got to clear the fence line and uh what comes with that is sometimes shrubbery trees and all that that's got to go the woody plants have to go and uh anyways i i just love this part of the property i love how open it is and we're going to keep working on opening this thing up uh, you know we're going to keep some of the woods it's great for wildlife deer hunting is really very very popular here and we love seeing our deer of course so we're not taking all the trees down but we're definitely clearing a, a lot of this out to make room for bison uh, which is the way it should be with some woods as well that's why you call it the cross timbers region in case you guys didn't know that now you know so now we are going to head to my aunt and uncle just live over here next to me their, their yard actually backs up to uh, our property and they they get the view they have the really nice pretty view of the sunsets and stuff so i'm gonna drive this good steer over here and we're gonna get to work because we're gonna build some new fence there
That just found a really good spot to get in. Not sure how. The track picked it up and threw it in here, so. Uh, it's a good place for a two of the seven eighths pipe to be. Right there. Got it. Uh. That looks better. been cleaning up on this uh, stretch right here and knocking out some hackberries oh can't stand those trees they have a heck of a root system the cedar is a lot easier to pull this precision manufacturing tree puller I, I love it. it it kills it I love it it can't get some of them big ones but if you can't get the big ones you get underneath and get uh, the roots you may can push it over um, so I'm gonna head back over to the Ponderosa and we're gonna talk about the calves and uh, some animals that I'm gonna sell All right, we made it back to the Ponderosa barn. Something I don't talk about very often to these calves right here. So two of them are from here, born at the Ponderosa. Three of them came from mom and Kevin's. And if you remember me bringing over those three cows that we just brought over and I let out in my recent video, these three babies here are from those three mamas, which is why we were able to bring those mamas over first in the first group because uh, they had their babies at a normal time in May. There's an event coming up. The Missouri Bison Association and the Oklahoma Bison Association have joined together and are doing a sale together. And it is called the Route 66 Bison Roundup. And it's gonna take place Saturday, March 11th in Springfield, Missouri. And um, I'm excited about this event. Myself and, and the members of the Oklahoma Bison Association and the Missouri Bison Association have been working uh, together to create a sale have been working together to create a sale for this coming spring and uh, I'm gonna take some animals to it I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some bison to this sale what I'm looking at taking is Eleanor's bull he was born in May of 2020 so he's two years old right now will be three I'm gonna take him I'm gonna take two yearlings uh, that we raised that are over here and then I may take a couple more yearlings that are at mom and Kevin's and uh, I'm excited for this sale. I'm excited as a bison association to work with, with the Missouri Bison Association on this sale. I'm excited to take some of our animals. You know, it, it takes bison so long to, uh, you know, grow up essentially. If you really want to say it, you know, it, bison can't breed until they're two. Then you have to wait till they're old enough to sell, market, um, you know, take for processing, whatever you want to do with it. It takes time, and and, and uh, bison are an investment. You have to invest in these bison. Well, we're uh, approaching our fifth year of raising bison, which will be this May, and now it's at the point where we're able to sell some bison. And so I'm excited to, to take some of our animals to this sale. And and it's kind of one of those deals where it's a it's a big gathering. Uh, you get to socialize and and network with lots of people, but uh, but also people get to bring their animals. Um, and you kind of get to showcase your animals. And so uh, I really haven't been able to do that. You know, you got to pay the bills too. <laughs> uh, for, uh, for farmers and ranchers, this is a way to pay bills. We have overhead here at the Ponderosa. You know, you've got, I'm a first generation bison farmer. You got land payments. You got to pay for fuel for your skid steer. You got to pay for uh, feed for your bison. You got to pay for a hay. You got to pay for all those things. Uh, you got to pay for new fencing. Um, fencing materials, the labor and things like that. Even though we do a lot of labor ourselves, there's a there's a lot of overhead that takes place on a, on a ranch, and it doesn't matter if it's cattle, bison, horses, uh, sheep, goats. There's there's always going to be overhead, and for us, it's a land payment, it's uh, feed, and and those sort of things that are the major overhead for us. So, you know, being a first time a bison. Uh, rancher this is these are the things that you have to uh, deal with if you want to uh, grow and so uh, we are still in the obvious early stages of this 
um, whole thing. And so, but it's all part of it. It's learning and you work hard and that's what we're trying to do. And so part of paying those bills and all that stuff is you got to sell some animals and uh, that's what we got to do. So these guys here, what we'll do with these calves. So what we'll do with these calves, we'll keep for a while and we will kind of raise them up to see how they turn out. This is a choice you get to make as a bison producer with your calves. You can kind of see how they're gonna look, if they may resemble their mom or their dad, and uh, we get to make a decision. You know, some of these calves I think look really good, and so we kind of want to see them grow up. We could sell them as calves if we wanted to. We could sell them as yearlings, and then you can also sell them as two-year-old bred heifers or two-year-old bulls, so you kind of have, have to make a choice. We could keep some of the females in here. We could keep some of the bulls and use for processing, or you can sell them. Those are kind of some of the choices that we'll have to face eventually. This is the fun part about raising bison is after you've grown a little bit, you get to kind of see your production. And so I'm excited to see how these guys turn out. And I really like the way some of them look. I'm really happy with how they look so far. And you know, once the animals have been in your program for a while, it's uh, it's nice to kind of see that all that hard work sort of start to pay off now that you've uh, you're seeing the production side of it with your animals. So what you're looking at is we've got some Big Joe babies and then we've got some Dunbar babies as well. Jackie. Jackie, you smell funny. I wanna thank my sponsor again for today's video, Athletic Greens. Thank you guys for watching us today. Keep ranching.